Lately, there's been some chatter in the news about Tesla working on their parking lot parking issues still. They're talking about reverse summon and all sorts of other things that seem like they might not be all that important to full self-driving and what's going on. But if we're ever going to get to robo taxis, we actually really need to get reverse summon and summon working in parking lots. In other words, these cars need to work in parking lots very, very effectively, just like they need to work on roads. I'm going to go all the way back to AI day six months ago now. Wow, it was August of 2021. And I'm going to play some clips of that. We're going to talk about how reverse summon works, how the car has to do has to do a lot of real world problem solving, and then we're going to talk about why that's actually important for robo taxis. Let's take a look. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I'm going to, like I said, play a section of the Tesla AI day. I'm going to play the video and then I'm going to stop and talk about different things. This is Ashok. I'm not even going to try to say his last name. It's in the description if you're interested. But anyway, he did a very, very nice in the weeds talk about how full self-driving can work in a parking lot situation. And so here we've got, you know, demonstrating the core issue with a Tory parking lot program. Ashok talked a lot about learning based methods and how it can be used for parking lot problems. Again, I have no idea if they're still using this, you know, six months ago is like a world of difference for Tesla. But anyway, this demonstrates the complexity of the problem and also how one can go about solving it. Here, this is a parking lot. Um, the Ego car is in blue and it needs to park in the green parking spot here. So it needs to go around the curbs, the park cars, uh, and the cones shown in orange here. So this is a simple baseline. It's a A star, it's a standard algorithm that uses a lattice space search. Um, and, and the heuristic here is the distance, uh, the Euclidean distance to the goal. Okay, so before we go on further, I want to talk about this. This is, it's a top-down thing and it looks like a video game because it kind of is a video game, but it demonstrates the basic thing, right? So if you've got Tesla Vision and it can create a vector space world around it, and I've done many episodes on that, check those out if you're interested. But anyway, if it can create a vector space representation like a bird's eye view network, essentially, then what you get is something like this for any real world parking lot. Now they've created a, a challenging problem because these little orange dots are traffic cones. So the car doesn't have free reign to go through you know, normally you just have open lanes like this. In fact, actually, if I was a human being, what I would do is just go the other direction and park the other way because this looks like a mess to try to get around. But so anyway, this car that's in blue that's starting to, you know, attempt to figure out how to get to the green parking space is over here. And it's trying to back out of this space, move through these cones around here and down to this green area. See that it directly shoots towards the goal, but very quickly gets trapped in a local minima and it backtracks from there and then searches a different path to try to go around this park car. Eventually, it makes progress and gets to the goal, but ends up using 400,000 nodes for making this. Okay, so stopping again here. So this algorithm is a classic in the AI world. It's the A star algorithm. It's uh, <laughs> It's been around for a really long time. It works really, really well, but basically what it does is at every step, it says, how far away am I from this parking place, right? So that's a Euclidean distance. It's just literally doesn't not caring about all of this stuff. It's just going like, how far away am I from here to here? So that's a pretty dumb method of trying to find a parking place, right? It, you need to take account of the fact that you have to go around these obstacles and everything. But it eventually does find a parking place, but again, it takes 400,398,320 ,300 nodes to, in order to get there. And you can see it's basically filled the entire volumetric space trying to figure out how to get there. So this is not a particularly workable idea. Obviously, this is a terrible heuristic. We want to do better than this. So if you added a navigation route to it, and has the car to follow the navigation route while being close to the goal, this is what happens. The navigation route helps immediately, uh, but still when it encounters uh, cones or other obstacles, it basically does the same thing as before, backtracks and then searches an old new path. And this poor search has no idea that these obstacles exist. It literally has to go there, check if it's in collision, and if it's in collision, back up. Um, the navigation heuristic helped, but still this took 22,000 nodes. 
All right, so again, stopping here, where you can see from this uh, chart on the left that we're still using the A-star search algorithm, but now what we've done is placed in navigation information, which is exactly what I was saying, right? It's, a, it's If you don't give it any navigation information about how it has to drive, then obviously it's going to be very slow. But you can still see, even in this situation, it had to do 22,224 nodes, as he's calling. I assume that means kind of like just searches, right? It, each little branch is a node to try to figure out how to get there. So definitely much, much better, order of magnitude better, but it's still not the most efficient method possible. So this is when he gets into the specifics of what they're working on at Tesla. We can design more and more of these heuristics to help the search uh, make go faster and faster, but it's really tedious and hard to, to design a globally optimal heuristic. Even if you had a distance function from the cones that guided the search, this would, not, this would, not be, this would only be effective for the single cone, but what we need is a global, global value function. So instead of what we want to use is neural networks to give this heuristic for us. The, ve the vision networks produces a vector space, and we have cars moving around in it. This basically looks like an Atari game. Uh, and it's a multiplayer version. Okay, so again, stopping here real quick, right? So what he's saying is just reiterating what I said earlier, which is once you've got a vision network that can give you that bird's eye view, everything essentially becomes an Atari game, right? Which is those old school, you know, 2D, like drive the car through these situations type things. So what we can do instead is we can actually use neural network heuristics, we can use Monte Carlo tree search, you know, so we can look at global information rather than local. So what he's saying is we need to move from the car moves one space in time and says, where am I right this second? Oh, there's a cone there. I need to back up, right? It needs to move from that second or millisecond by millisecond up to a global thing where it's actually looking at the entire situation and saying, here's where I am. Here's my goal. I can use essentially uh, algorithms that have already been created to solve things like Go, chess, Shogi, and Atari games without needing to have specific heuristics built in. So that's a huge advantage because the neural network can just kind of learn from scratch how to do this without you having to put in each individual piece of code. And this is the advantage of neural networks, of course, is that they can learn very complex things all in one shot, more or less. So we can use techniques such as uh, Mu0, Alpha0, et cetera, that was used to solve Go and other Atari games to solve the same problem. So we're working on neural networks that can produce state and action distributions that can then be plugged into Monte Carlo tree search uh, with various cost functions. Some of the cost functions can be explicit cost functions like distance to like collisions, comfort, traversal time, et cetera, but they can also be uh, uh, interventions from the actual manual driving events. We train such a network for this simple parking problem. So that's really, really cool, actually. So he's saying that you can actually do human in the loop for this. So it, it uses a bunch of heuristics that it has on its own, but if you use this with real world data and a person interferes and takes over or something like that, you can use that data as well. So that means you can probably train this a lot faster. And already you can see, we haven't seen the actual evidence yet, but you can see the MCTS argmax sampling <laughs> with the neural network policy and value function. That's the search heuristic. So again, and this is more of a policy function. It's more like find a parking place with the least amount of discomfort, the quickest possible, the shortest path, et cetera. You're giving it global policy indicators, not individual, you know, moment by moment things. And you can see that the number of expansions is only 288 in this case. So again, a, a couple of orders of magnitude less than the, the A star with navigation. So here again, same problem. Let's see how MCTS tree search does. So here you notice that the planner is basically able to, in one shot, make progress towards the goal. Uh, to notice that this is not even using a navigation heuristic. Just given the scene, the planner is able to go directly towards the goal. All the other offshoots you're seeing are possible options. It's not choosing any of them, just choosing the option that directly takes it towards the goal. Uh, the reason is that the neural network is able to absorb the global context of the scene and then produce a value function that effectively guides it towards the global minima as opposed to getting it stuck in any local minima. Okay, so let's talk about that. So again, what we've got is once we can see the entire world, we can let the neural network cheat, essentially. So what that means is that the neural network, like it'd be like playing a game where you are playing a maze game, for example, right? And you're inside the maze and you can't see the, 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 the details. And so it's very complicated to figure out where to go. But what you can do instead is you can change that view to a top down view where you can see the entire maze at once. And once you can do that, you can sort of trace out the right path. So that's essentially what we're doing is a maze solving algorithm here, more or less. And so if we back this up just a little bit, okay, you can see that there's these little 
I don't know, hydras coming out here. What that is, is that's not actually expansion nodes. It's actually going like, okay, which of these directions is the best? So it's making multiple predictions, uh, probably using a Monte Carlo algorithm, which is just essentially rolling the dice. And, and it's saying like, what if I went this way? What if I went this way? What if I went this way? And then it says, look at the global situation. What is going to improve my global situation the best? And that is what, you know, so you can see that the next move after that, right is moving a little bit here so it's it's following this one then it's probably going to follow this one and it's going to move into the parking path very very rapidly so this only takes 288 nodes and several orders of magnitude less than what was done in the a star with the euclidean uh, distance uh, heuristic so this is what the final architecture is going to look like the vision system is going to crush down the dense video data into a vector space uh, it's going to be consumed by both an explicit planner and a neural network planner in addition to this, the network panel can also consume intermediate features of the network. Together, this produces a trajectory distribution, uh, and um, it can be optimized end-to-end, -end, both with explicit cost functions and human intervention and other imitation data. This then goes into explicit planning function that does uh, whatever is easy for that and produces the final steering and acceleration commands for the car. Okay, so they're <laughs> simple, right? So basically what he's talking about here is this is like a real world situation, not the toy problem situation. But once you can create this bird's eye view network, which is the, the crux, I really believe, of Tesla's full self-driving, if it really can see this world and every object in it, perfectly or very, very close to perfectly, then basically the rest of full self-driving is just doing what we're doing here, which is creating these planning algorithms that give you some global overall uh, planning and control, explicit planning and control, neural network planner, right? So it gives it, you create a neural network that can then take that information and solve it just like it would solve a video game, which is very, very cool. All right, so why is this stuff so important to what's going on with full self-driving? Well, the big issue here is that robo-taxis have to be able to drive in parking lots, in people's driveways, and anywhere else that's not a marked road in order to pick people up. I've seen Waymo videos where people are picked up by the Waymo vehicle, and what they have to do is walk to essentially like a bus stop. They have to go to a pre you know, defined place where they can wait for the Waymo vehicle. That's not really going to solve full self-driving for robo-taxis because people are not going to be satisfied to come out of the Kroger or grocery store or whatever with their hands full of bags or something. And then the car says, oh, walk across the parking lot to this little predefined area at the far end of the parking lot. There, I'll pick you up. People are going to be like, hey, man, <laughs> I've got a lot of stuff in my hands. I would, you know, I would rather drive my own car if that was the situation. So the car's got to be able to navigate a parking lot summon itself to the front of the store and then pick the person up. And of course, either if you own the car yourself and you want it to go park itself, or if it's a robo taxi and it's not being utilized right away, it needs to also be able to find a parking place. So it's gotta be able to do the summon, which is to come to you. And it's also gotta be able to do the reverse summon, which is what we were just watching Ashok talk about, which is that the car's gotta go from where it is right now to an empty parking place. And that all depends again on this vision network. It has to be able to create a bird's eye view, create a vector object space like a 3D game and take that information and then solve path planning problems. So that's the reason why this is still a, it, it's obviously something that they haven't solved. It doesn't work particularly well yet. I'm really, really interested to see how version 11 of the full self-driving beta works, you know, fingers crossed. That's supposed to be the single stack that will have parking, regular city streets and highways all in one stack. So in my mind, that's gonna be the update to keep an eye on. That's going to give us an indication of how close we truly are to robo taxis and full self-driving where you really don't have to pay attention to the road anymore. All right, I hope you found this episode fun and interesting. If you did, please do like it because YouTube's AI depends on that and also consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. This is actually thanks to Claudia. She was asking me questions about all of this stuff and what the state of the world with reverse summon and summon are right now. And so I got going down this rabbit hole and I decided to go ahead and make a video. So thank you. <laughs> anyway, if you want contact with me and you want to talk about these things with the community, it's a really great community. Definitely check out the link in the description and join us. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have TeslaBot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. 
Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.